the best of the week on Relevant Radio. Judy is calling in from Norwalk, California. Judy, welcome to The Inner Life. Thanks for calling in. My daughter is a Christian, but she's not Catholic. And she gives me a wonderful Bible verse, which I forgot, um, that, you know, we're not here to suffer. God wants us Mm -hmm. to be healed. So Mm -hmm. I need, and she's great. She's not biased, nothing like that about Catholics, things like that. But she's really good. I mean, she's good in the Word. She's on fire. And yeah, but I need something to, you know, explain to her, like, the redemptive suffering, right? That's what it's called, right? Redemptive suffering, kind yep. of? No, that's exactly right. And it's a wonderful question. And praise God that your daughter is so on fire with Jesus and love for the Lord. That's a beautiful thing. There needs to be some distinctions here. It's true. You know, the Lord has no desire for human beings, it's true, in, in a very real way to suffer, uh, and certainly not in a way that deprives us of our dignity, of our of our fundamental rights. At the same time, we live in a broken world, and suffering absolutely happens. We see it all around us, and God, who is all-powerful, who certainly could stop it, he allows it. And so it raises the question, why would an all-powerful, all-good God allow us to suffer in our world? And here we have to realize that we live in a fallen world, and because of that, because our fellow human beings are broken, because our bodies are afflicted by the original sin and the fall, there will be challenges in life. The great message of the crucifixion, of course, is that God enters into these places of suffering and brings his divine presence. And the beautiful, powerful fact is that oftentimes we ourselves only learn how to be more compassionate, more loving, more patient by enduring suffering. And we speak about redemptive suffering, certainly in terms of offering it up for others and in reparation for sin. That is true. But we also need to remember that part of redemptive suffering is also we will become holier through the crucible of suffering. You know, in the beginning of the book of Genesis, one of the one of the results of the fall is that Eve, in giving birth, will have birthing pains. It's right there in the book of Genesis, right there in, in the Word of God. And this is more than just a biology note. This indicates that in a fallen world, which is now what we live in, in order to bring forth life, in order to bring forth something good that lasts, You must be willing to suffer for it. Just as a mother suffers very intense pains in giving birth to her child, so too as we are are stretched and pulled and learn how to love and die to self, God allows these, these instruments of disappointments, of difficulties, of challenges, so that we might grow. So that would be one angle. I, I, your, your daughter's right to bring up the point God is an all-loving father. What father wants their child to suffer? But we also must acknowledge the reality. We live in a fallen world. There is suffering in that world. God is all-powerful. God is all-good. How do we put these two things together? I think the answer is redemptive suffering. Hi, this is Patrick Conley. You can join me and listen on the Relevant Radio app to The Inner Life, live each weekday at 11 a.m. Central. And thanks for listening.